Did you know that if you want to convert a website into an app, you just have to go to Safari, open the website you want to convert, click on share, add to doc, hit enter, and then it lives right there in your doc as an app. And while we are already on YouTube, let me show you another pretty cool trick. Did you know that you can double right click on a website and then choose enter picture and picture and the video will be in picture and picture mode. And when you are on an article in Safari, you can click on this icon, click on show reader, and you can read this article without distractions. And you can even click on summarize and Apple intelligence will summarize the article for you. And if you want to be extra productive and don't want to be distracted, you can hold option and click on the time and this will enable do not disturb mode on your Mac so you don't get any notifications. And another pretty cool trick I just recently discovered is that you can click and hold the command key and drag menu bar items around. And speaking of the menu bar, when you go into the system settings and then click on menu bar, you can enable or disable options that are shown or not shown in the menu bar. And nobody is talking about the next trick and I don't know why. If you right click an image and then go to quick actions, you can rotate the image, paint on the image, convert the image to another file format, or even remove the background. Or you can even select two images, right click, go again to quick access and click create PDF. And this will create a PDF with these two images inside. And did you know that you can double click on a note to pop it out in an extra window and then go to window and click keep on top. So the notes window always stays on top of your other images. And here I am in a file upload dialog and I don't want to search this timcook2.jpg file so I can just drag it inside of here and it gets selected. I'm sure most of you already know that but for the three people that don't know it you can select a file and click the spacebar to preview images or several files. And here in the find you can drag items in the sidebar for quick access or even hold command to drag it into the menu bar. These two options first seem pretty similar but you can also drag applications into the top bar for example Google Chrome and now I can drag an image onto the Google Chrome Chrome icon and it will open with Google Chrome. And by the way, that also works in the dock. So I can click the same image and now let's open it with Safari and we have successfully opened an image with Safari. On most apps, you can right click on this toolbar thing and click customize toolbar. And now you can drag items in and out of the toolbar. And down here, you can show only the icons or icons with text or if you're weird, just the text. This is my latest YouTube video opened in the QuickTime player. If you want to remove the video or the audio from this video, you can click on edit and then choose remove audio or remove video. So let's remove the video and we are left with the audio file. And now let's say I want to copy a specific frame from that image. To do that, I just choose the right frame, for example, this one, and then just hit command C. And if I found a nice location to paste it, I'd hit command V and here's a frame of my last YouTube video. We already talked about how to disable notifications so you can focus better, but you can also go to the system settings, then accessibility and audio, and here you can enable background sounds. So I can choose, for example, the fire sound and work while listening to this nice sound effects. Now everybody knows that you can switch between your applications by hitting command and tab. But if you want to go backwards in this list, you can hit command shift tab and go into the other direction. Here I have two windows, one active one and one that's in the background. And when I hold the command key, I can interact with the window in the background. For example, I can scroll or resize the window or even move the window. Now when I drag a file onto a folder, so the folder opened and I can import the file, you saw that it takes ages. To change that, open the system settings, go to accessibility, pointer control, and increase spring loading speed to the max. If I drag a file now onto this folder, it opens instantly. And in this folder, I now have a bunch of files. And I want to create a folder of these five files. To do that, I just select them, right click, and hit new folder with four items. And now I want to create a zip file, so an archive of these seven folders. To do that, I just select them, right click again, and hit compress. And here is a zip file. If I double click, all folders are there. And when a USB device is connected, it takes ages to right click and hit eject. It's way faster if you just hit command E and the drive gets ejected. And some people still don't know that, but you can hit the enter key on a file or a folder and rename it. But now I want to delete this hello folder without sending it to the trash. To do that, I hit option command delete, then click on delete and it's gone. And you'll notice it's not in the trash. In this folder, there are two items. And if I select them both, right click and hit rename, this window will pop up and you can batch rename these files with rules you set. And you can also copy the password of every Wi-Fi network your Mac is connected just by going to do the system settings, Wi-Fi, then click on these three dots and copy. And when you open the calculator app and then hit, you can calculate P, which by the way is 3.14159265. If you're writing a nice story somewhere on your Mac, you can hit Control Shift Plus to add an Apple logo to your text. That's just incredible. And now I have a bunch 
bunch of finder windows open and to merge them all into one window with tabs I can click on window and then click merge all windows and boom I have just one finder window with several tabs. And if you click on a folder and click option and the right arrow key every folder inside will expand and when you select multiple files and hit command I the info panel for both these files will open. But if you want to have one info panel for these two files together you can hit control command I and you will see the information for both these files together. If you copy text from a website and then paste it you'll notice that this weird formatting will stay. But if you hit command option shift V the text will be pasted without the weird formatting. If you have something that you need to type all the time for example your email address you can also go into the system settings to keyboard and text replacements click on plus and for example replace colon email with your email address click add done and then if I type colon email my email address will paste in. Let's say you have a bunch of windows open but only want to focus on your active window. To do that you can click option command H and every window will hide except your active one. The windows are just hidden not closed so you can easily reopen them. If your cursor is too small or looks too much like Mac OS you can go into the system settings to accessibility display and scale your cursor up and even change the color Windows cursor. And if you want to be able to zoom in on your desktop, you can go back to accessibility, then choose zoom and enable your scroll gesture with modifier key to zoom. Just enable that, add that modifier key, set the zoom style to full screen, and then you can zoom in. And we stand the system settings app for just a little bit. But now we go to desktop and dock, scroll all the way down until we see this hot corners button. And now I can run a specific action whenever I move my mouse to a corner of the screen. For example, mission control. But this will be pretty annoying that every time you move your mouse accidentally into this corner mission control opens. To fix that you can go again into this menu and hold any modifier key for example shift and now if I move my mouse in that corner nothing happens but if I hold shift and do that mission control opens. Let's say I want to go to the lock screen section without moving my mouse. To do that I just hit L or I want to go to the touch ID and password section I hit T or U or K to go to keyboard and this works in almost every list on your Mac. It's a helpful feature. And often when you are in a right click menu or in any menu actually, for example this Avon menu, you can hold the option key to get other or more advanced options. To navigate between the desktops or full screen apps, you can swipe with three or four fingers. To open mission control, you can swipe up with three or four fingers. And if you have multiple windows of the same app open, you can hard click on its icon in the dock to show all the windows of the app. To show the desktop, you just spread all your fingers on your trackpad. And a little hidden trick is that you can can move windows with three fingers. This needs to be activated first. To do that you go into the system settings, to accessibility, to pointer control, trackpad options and enable use trackpad for dragging and for dragging style select three finger track. And of course pinch to zoom, the classic, also works. If you have an image open in the preview app you can rotate your fingers to rotate the image and here in the photos app you can swipe with two fingers to navigate between photos. And to see all your notifications and widgets you can swipe in from the very left with two fingers on your trackpad. If you just took a screenshot on your Mac you can drag this little preview into any window and it won't be saved to your desktop but into this app. And if you click option and one of the brightness keys the display settings will open and the same goes for volume. And did you know that you can change the view of the finder by hitting command 1, 2, 3 and 4. If you're anywhere in the finder and then do a right click and just import from iPad. If you have an iPhone it also says import from iPhone. You can take a photo, scan a document document or add a sketch that will be saved directly onto your Mac. And the last trick for today, you can hold the command key and click on a link to open that link in a new tab. That was 56 Mac tips I've learned in 5 years. And if you found even one of them helpful, you'll love what's coming next. Here's the deal. When this channel hits 1000 subscribers, I'm going to rank every single of your desktops, your ugly wallpapers, messy dogs, everything. To be part of it, hit subscribe now, then hit the first link in the description to send me a screenshot of your desktop. I'll see you in that ranking video. But until then, here's another Mac video where YouTube thinks you're interested in.